Thank you. Good morning. I want it, I'm going to take this out of order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Did everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. Wait a minute. The microphone's right there. Yeah. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your time here. Thank you. Thank you. Susan McCastro. What's your name? She's going to say our prayer for the breakfast. No, what's your name? What's your name? Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, my name is Sarah. Let me lead you in prayer before our breakfast. Gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of being able to organize ourselves politically and for knowing that loyalty to a political party does not have to mean disloyalty to you. We thank you for the opportunity that this election year puts before us to exercise our solemn duty not only to vote, but to influence countless others to vote. God of mercy, our nation is in a time of great transition. With all the injustice and fear in our world today, we ask you to inspire us and to guide us as we participate in the upcoming elections for United States President, for U.S. Senator, for U.S. Congress, for Massachusetts State Senate, Senator, for state representatives and other state offices, and for Plymouth County offices. Dear Lord, our city of Brockton faces challenges. Inspire our leadership with courage, resiliency, and compassion. Grant all of us the moral stamina of spirit and integrity of purpose to prevail over cynicism and selfishness so that with compassion and courage, we can affirm and uphold the common good and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We are grateful for all gathered here to support this event of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, for the delicious food we're about to enjoy, and for those who prepared our breakfast and planned this great event, which is held in memory of two devoted Brockton Democrats, Red and Jean Sullivan. And we are grateful for the right to vote and for our United States of America. Amen. Amen. Greg Hanley, candidate. And that is so far who we have. But we also have Rasan Hall. And we have Rosemary Conley, who did our flowers. She's a Whitman Hanson yeah. School Committee elected official. Did I miss anyone? Oh, Jessica Laverty. Who works? Attorney General. Attorney General. She works for the Attorney General's office. Andrea Campbell. East Bridgewater. DCT. Yes. 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 I look around the room, there's a lot of people here. She's just queen of everything. <laughs> She's for <an> after. <laughs> Thank you. So, let me say, I know we went out of turn, but let me say good morning, Democrats. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. First, I would like to thank all our sponsors. The Brockton Firefighters Local 144. Chapter of the NAACP. Woo! State represent, represent, Representative Woo! Michelle Dubois. Woo! Iron Workers Local Number Seven. Woo! And 
in the local 653 Teamsters. Teamsters. I want to thank all those organizations for your continued support. Thank you so much. Couldn't do without you. Today we are wearing white. You might notice that some, some of us women are wearing white. Um, in support of the 90th anniversary of the suffragist movement of 1920. But it wasn't until 1934 that all women earned the right to vote. Let's not forget. This is important as we are now faced with a movement to turn back the clocks. We all need to help protect the voting rights of everyone. This year we have the opportunity to elect the first woman president. But to do this, we all must, we all need to get out and do something, do something. And that's what the movement is, do something, anything. Knock on doors, send and hold postcard parties, making phone calls to battleground states, very important. Registering to vote. These are all imperative activities if we are to maintain our democratic party. So in, all, in closing, let's all get out and do something. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Thomasy. Oh, no. Jamie Hodges. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Your turn. <laughs> We'd like to, um, you see these baskets here for our scholarship award, uh, winners. Those are, yeah. I'm going to turn the mic over to Steve. Jamie. Hello. Um, I have the privilege of being able to give out the scholarships this morning. Uh, for years, I've considered this the highlight of the breakfast. Uh, it's wonderful and it's inspirational. Um, since I have a microphone, I just wanted to make a brief editorial comment. Um, we have um, a wonderful crowd here today. Could be a bit bigger. And one of the things I noticed is that many of us were here 30 or 35 years ago. Um, and we were a bit younger then. We do have in the Brocken Democratic City Committee uh, a, a small group of younger people now who are trying to recruit more people, the people with the children, right, who we were when we first came. So um, these days, people, uh, young people particularly, will vote, um, will register as unenrolled. And um, they don't really want to be committed to one side or another. But um, in response to that, I was thinking about our organization, you know, would need a mission statement. And um, I have this little sticky note above my desk. So I'm going to give you the mission statement of the Democratic um, Party. It's a quote from Franklin Roosevelt in January 1937 at his second inaugural address. And you all know this one, but it is our mission statement. The test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much. It is whether we provide enough for those who have too little. So I think that's what we sell when we go out and recruit people. So anyway, without further ado, I do want to give out the scholarships. And it, these, these scholarships are clearly um, in the spirit of the uh, Democratic mission statement. So I have a 
statement is really nicely done, written by Jamie. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> good morning, esteemed guests, scholarship recipients, and members of the Brockton City Committee, uh, Democratic City Committee. It's with great honor and admiration that I stand before you today to present the 2024 Jean and Paul Stadensky Scholarship. This scholarship, named in tribute to the remarkable Jean and Paul Stadensky, reflects their enduring commitment to education and community service. Jean and Paul Sudensky were more than dedicated Democrats. They were pioneers of positive change. Their lives were characterized by a deep devotion to helping others and a belief in the power of education as a transformative force. It is their legacy of generosity and service that we celebrate through this scholarship. Today we have the privilege of honoring two outstanding students who embody the values that Jean and Paul cherish. Both of these scholarship recipients have demonstrated remarkable academic achievement, an unwavering commitment to their communities, and the kind of perseverance that speaks to their potential as future leaders. To our 2024 scholarship recipients, you have distinguished yourself through hard work, dedication, and an inspiring sense of purpose. Your achievements reflect the same qualities that Jean and Paul Stadensky held here. As you continue edu your educational journeys, you may carry forward their legacy by striving for excellence and contributing positively to the world around you. The Brockton Democratic City Committee Scholarship, uh, our committee is intensely proud to support your aspirations. We believe that investing in your future is a way of honoring the ideals that Jean and Paul Stadensky lived for, ideals of service, leadership, and community. Um, and as such, uh, at this time, I would like to present the scholarships first to Eliana Andrade. goes to Liliana Reno. I just want to say thank you to everyone for this opportunity. This scholarship like means a lot to me because I'm going to be studying, um, I'm going to major in political science. And Thank you all. Congratulations, 
Again, thank you to everybody who contributed to the scholarship. And I do want to remark about what a wonderful speech you wrote. Thank you. To start, I would like Senator Brady to come up and start our, our speeches. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause to our chairwoman of the Democratic Citizens Committee and all the volunteers who have been able to attack the life every day to help elect Democrats and all the volunteers who put this breakfast together. Thank you all for all your work today. Let's give a round of applause. Uh, as was mentioned, this, this is a very serious election. Every election is serious, but um, you know, we've seen what's happened at the federal level with the, with the, I don't even want to mention his name, with the fake red hair. And, you know, people forget, and I have friends in Brockton that work for the government, work for the state, and they are being blinded by the misinformation that goes out there, and they're supporting this candidate, unfortunately, and we see what he didn't do when he was president. You know, he denied that there was a COVID pandemic. And my brother died four years ago to COVID. And it affected our city very drastically. A lot of our nursing homes, our elderly homes were severely affected. And he denied it. And thank God for our Plymouth County delegation to get the funding here. Greg Hanley did a great job and, and Tom O'Brien. And we got to support the Democrats. Rhonda Nyman, who I've known for years, worked with her in the state legislature. Her husband worked as a state rep. She's a local elected official in Hanson. We got to elect all Democrats from the top down. So I am supporting Rhonda Nyman and Greg Hanley to get on the county commission seat. We need to support Democrats because they work to get the funding to cities like Brockton when our former Republican governor wanted to control the funding. And it took longer from the governor's office to get the funding down here that they did with our county. So thank you for all your work on that. And let's give them a round of applause. And, and I also um, want to thank Representative um, Jerry Cassidy, who's done an awesome job. He Not only did he work for our great Senator Tom Kennedy for many years, he's a local city councilor. I serve him on the city council. I was very honored to serve with him in the State House of Representatives. And one thing he did, which was unbelievable work, you know, we don't promote what the Democrats do as well as we should. And one of the most important things, we passed the Welcome Home Bill, the Valor for our veterans. We're sitting in a VFW. We're thankful to the veterans for allowing us to use this building. And, you know, uh, not only did Representative Cass do a great job, but we cannot do our job without a good staff behind us. And Bridget Plouffe, was doing enormous work to help get that HEROES Act passed that helps increase Chapter 115 benefits for our veterans, does tax incentives for our veterans, and also free license plates for our veterans. So let's give Bridget Cliff and Representative Captain a round of applause. And that's, that's why we, we got to do a better job in this election, getting the word out about all the good initiatives that Democrats have done because you don't do a good enough job. And I just want to talk about a little things that we got passed in the legislature. And one, one other thing that's important in this election is four ballot questions. And there's one about removing the, the standardized testing on MCAT. That should not be the only measuring map. We know we need a measuring stick for kids to graduate, but that should not be the only thing that, that our students are, are use for graduation. So, but a couple of things we did pass, we, we passed a $57.999 billion budget for this coming fiscal year, and we are big supporters of education in Massachusetts. So we increased funding for universal school meals for kids. We got more money than ever before in Chapter 70 money, not only for the city of Brockton, but all the cities and towns in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The fair share amendment was huge. That brings more funding for education. We also have the um, <coughs> Student Opportunity Act. There's been so many good things that we've done, and we've got to promote that within the Democratic Party because it's not promoted enough. And, uh, you know, that's all of us working together, Rep. Dubois, Rep. Cassidy, and, 
and his staff and, and uh, Rita Mendez. And let's congratulate Rita Mendez. She just had a nice picture the other day. A couple other things we passed, which is so important for our firefighters, PFAS. Mm -hmm. It's affecting yes. cancer rates with our firefighters. I want to thank the PFFM and the local, Brockton Local 144, for all the work they did advocating to get the legislature to finally pass legislation to remove the PFAS out of their yes. equipment they wear. Firefighters are out on the street saving our lives every day. Mm -hmm. And they should not be affected. Their mm -hmm. lives are dangerous enough helping save our citizens with, with 911 calls and fires and everything else. They shouldn't have to wear this equipment that causes cancer. So thank you to the 144 and all the advocates that push that legislation through. The government did sign it. And, and I won't go through all the things, but I get money for the local colleges in the budget for Bridgewater State with cybersecurity and Mass Square College. We did um, money for libraries all across the district. We got money to clean our water. I represent towns outside of Brockton, but we get our water from Silver Lake. I get money in that to clean the water supplies. And, and none of us does it alone. We have a great team in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, with a great team locally. And I am endorsing the whole Democratic ticket from the top down. We gotta make sure that we get uh, our President Harris elected, oh, yeah. and our Vice President. Uh, I know some of the U.S. Senate Warrens are on the ballot this year, and our local county seats and our local officials. And as I mentioned, Bridget Plouf, who's done a yeoman's work, we gotta make sure she gets elected for this upcoming election. So I'm just grateful to be your Senator. None of us can do the job alone. I get calls every day from things like the cat stuck in a tree, so some more serious issues of the opioid addiction crisis. And we wonder why there's homeless people out there. And I get funding every year in the budget to help a, a deal with the opioid addiction crisis as well. And mental health is a big issue here. We have a new facility on Pearl Street uh, where the old Braywell nursing home is for, for people with mental health issues and addiction. But we're so glad that the old Good Samaritan is no longer be, being owned by Stuart Healthcare because that guy was a social There's other races. I want to thank you for all your continued support, and uh, we cannot do it alone. In anything we can be of help at the state level, please do not hesitate to contact us. And I'm just grateful and honored to be our state senator. Thank you. Thank you. Our next uh, speaker. Good job, Brady. Thank you. You guys are good team. Okay. Matt Madonna. Where are you? I didn't see him come in. He yeah, oh, he is, Matt. I just don't want to probate. Register of probate. Register of probate. Thank you. I didn't sign in. I didn't know I was speaking, but I, 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 I am very grateful for the I missed opportunity. You. Oh, uh, I missed you at the sign-in. <laughs> it's good to see everybody. We have a big year ahead of us. Um, I'm going to be brief. I'm not on the ballot this year. All of my energy as an elected official, as a diehard Democrat here in Public County, is to help us lift the boat, raise the tide. We have to do this in November. What we have seen from our former president is horrible, horrible. From Roe v. Wade to the way he treats the environment to the misinformation that he puts out, the number of times when he speaks publicly, the fact checkers don't even know how to keep up anymore. It is, it is remarkable. We need to be there to put out a positive message, to ID our voters, to do the old school door-to-door -door work, to ID people, to sit down and have those postcard parties, to text our friends, to take those drives to New Hampshire in the fall and knock those doors. If we don't lift people up and help people at this point, what we're going to have is uh, something I can't even imagine. We have opportunities here to break glass ceilings that have never been broken before. And we have to lift each other up and do it. And what I see here is energy. From our county delegation to our state representatives, everybody here is going to work together. We're going to lift each other up. And we're going to do this come November. Let's go, Democrats. Then we have uh, John Buckley. Register of Deeds. 
important stuff here. Amazing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Amazed, that's right. We're giving you exercise. <laughs> So good morning, Democrats. Uh, thank you very much for your help in renominating me as the Plymouth County Register of Deeds. I'm really happy again to be part of the Democratic ticket. Uh, we need to support everyone from the very top of the ticket, our presidential candidates, all the way down the ballot to our county commission candidates. Um, over the years, this event has been a tremendous opportunity to get together. We haven't been able to do a lot of this since COVID. So I thank Deb Garland and the members of the city committee, as well as the workers here today, for doing this event in honor of Paul Sullivan and the Sudinsky family. By working together, we'll all be successful in November. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, Jerry Cassidy. I'm sure everyone would like to hear some parting words of encouragement. Thank you, Thank you for the uh, Democratic uh, City Committee. I've been a member here since 1987. 86. And uh, this is one of the best Democratic City Committee throughout the whole state. You see my good friend, Nachi, call me back there. I think he's been uh, on the committee since before that. And, you know, the Studenskis, I thank them very much for everything they've done over the years. Um, we do have a great delegation with Senator Brady and Representative Parr and uh, Rep. Mendez. And I'm uh, looking forward to having Bridget Plot replace me. <laughs> if we did not, uh, we did the Heroes Act uh, a few a few weeks ago, a month or so ago. And uh, without Bridget's uh, knowledge and uh, steadfast guidance throughout that whole uh, ordeal that we, we get that bill passed, anytime you want us to know anything about the Heroes Act, it was all because of Bridget. She was the one who actually passed it. Um, you know, on the, on the house. So, you know, I, I, you always have to have a great staff. I, I, I joke around, I have a press secretary, I have the chief of staff, I have research director, they're all Bridget Plum. So, he does it all. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we've done an awful lot of other uh, things but, but besides the Heroes Act, the uh, Affordable uh, uh, Homes Act that, that we passed, uh, you know, at the end of the uh, session. Uh, looks like the economic development package is going to be coming out hopefully within a month or so. That's that's our next goal. And on the uh, the Heroes Act, the license plate uh, that uh, Mike was talking about for veterans, that's going to be forty dollars off, not the whole not the whole amount, just to let the, the good senator know. Uh, so I thank everyone very much. This is a, always a great event.
apuestas que se me imagen. Pueden apuestas me mueven. But I wanted to say a little bit about um, Bridget. When I got elected brand new at the legislation, she has been there for so long. And anytime when you needed anything, she's always knowledgeable. We don't go to Jerry, we go to Bridget because we know she's the one. She's a great woman behind the great man. So really anytime, so responsive, really knows what she is doing. So we not we really need to pick up our energy and we gotta elect our own people. And Rep the Boy has been the time time we make Candidate for Plymouth County. Commissioner? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Governor's Council. <laughs> it's okay, Deb. I'm 
for substance abuse and mental health. I'm also a legal advocate for a domestic violence shelter where I help women navigate the complexities of the criminal justice system. But most importantly, uh, my cousin spent 27 years in prison for a crime he did not commit in the city of Boston. In 2021, he was exonerated from all his charges. So I took the chance to run for governor's council because I want to make sure that anyone, regardless of your sexual orientation or your color, your skin, whatever zip code you're from, that your encounter with the criminal justice system, that no one should be left behind, that you should have someone advocating for you at all levels. And um, given the experience that I, that I have working um, within the last decade in the criminal justice system, I've seen good judges, I've also seen judges that are not so good, but we can do better in Massachusetts. We can make sure that we have fair and impartial judges that is going to be able to put people in treatment and um, give them resources to go into the community instead of incarcerating them when they have an addiction. And we want to make sure that we have judges that are pro-choice. We know right now women's rights are being impacted, but I want to make sure that I'm a voice for women and everyone in the LGBT community. I want to make sure that no one is left behind, and I want people to know it's a people's court. So the fight is not over. I do have a Republican challenger, but I know the same fight we did for September 3rd, we will also do um, it for November 5th. And I'm going to hold everyone ac accountable to reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out to all our Democratic folks uh, to vote. We don't have time to play games. We want to make sure we make history on all levels. We want to bring everyone on the Democratic ballot to the State House. So make sure, do your part, call, call everyone, make sure that 18 year olds are registered to vote and that everyone is registered to vote because this is the time to make our voice heard. And thank you so much for inviting us. Greg Hanley, he's a Plymouth County Commissioner. my speech this morning because my IT department, my three daughters, were not home. Okay. So I'm gonna try my best with what I got, all right? So first of all, I wanna thank the leadership of the Brockton City Committee for allowing me to be your keynote speaker this morning for the Jean and Red Sullivan Memorial Democratic Breakfast. At first, when I was asked to speak, I thought, oh crap, <laughs> they couldn't get a guest speaker, so they dug deep and they asked me to be today's orator. So strap on your seatbelts, because here we go. I figured I would depart from my regular speech on how great the county is. However, I am proud of the way Plymouth County has delivered for the great city of Brockton. We have distributed well over 36 million to the city of champions between the CARES and Opera program since 2020, and I'll tell you right now, it would have cost you 37% more had the state taken it. So I'm glad Plymouth County was around, and I'm glad I could the And now this is where it gets technical, so bear with me. All right. So, however, uh, I promise that that's all I'll say for the, about the county for at least now. Uh, but because my election as county commissioner comes up uh, during every presidential ele election cycle, I've gained a, a keen insight uh, as to the presidential politics and how it trickles down and impacts each and every one of us every day in the county and for those who live here in the city of Brockton. 
or better known as one of the two Shia towns, a little history quiz. John Buckley's in the background. He's the keeper of all the records. He's always reminding me to insert a little history. So a Shia town is also known as a capital, and we have two of them, one in Plymouth and one right here in Brockton. So there you go, John, check the box. Right? Am I good? <laughs> Today I thought I'd speak uh, to you about my journey as a Democrat since the 2016 election. Back then, around this time, we had come out of the Democratic Presidential Convention and Hillary Clinton was our nominee. On the other side were the Republicans, and they went through 12 candidates in an ugly and bruising campaign that best, at best they come up with a thug named Trump, um, who used sound bites and relied on oppon opponent's character assassination. And he allowed uh, for sound bites that rang hollow to me on public policies with the tagline like drain the swamp or Marco Rubio's little hands, et cetera, et cetera. But that particular year, <laughs> You can laugh, it's okay. <laughs> that particular year, I was 110% uh, uh, with Bernie Sanders, who focused on ordinary citizens, and Bernie proposed at the time to target the top 2% and the uh, ability for corporates to internationally be registered so they'd avoid paying their fair share of taxes, preventing us all from enjoying in a graduated income tax designed for work for all, to work for all. Now, if that sounds boring, folks, it is, because that's county government at its best. It's not glamorous, it's pretty boring, but I wanted to throw that in there because for me in particular, that's why I supported Bernie, uh, Bernie Sanders. I was all in and I worked hard to get Bernie elected. And when we didn't meet our goal after the presidential primary and on the floor of the national convention, I got behind our party's nominee. Now I'm starting to shake. <laughs> okay, bear with me. Yeah, technical difficulties. Well, back in 2016, I'm sorry, let me go back a little further. So I rolled up my sleeves and I went to work for our party. Back in 2016, what I learned that year, and we all know today, is that Trump never deviates from his campaign style of tearing down his opponents on a personal level. Back then, and it is true today, Trump never would go into detail about how he was going to govern. But rather, he'd go into detail about his opponent's shortcomings, their character, their integrity, their abilities. He recalled the fictional campaign narrative in 2016 that Donald Trump and his so-called billionaire business acumen and his fiscal abilities is what this country needed. Do you remember that he was going to build a wall and have someone else pay for it? <laughs> or do you remember the promise of the, of the getting rid of the vote of mistrust in elected officials by draining the swamp? He portrayed himself as an outsider and a reformer. That year he won, not based on his merit, but it was because he was successful in getting the American public to vote against Hillary, Trump, Hillary uh, Clinton instead of voting for him. And you know what happened? It, and why that happened? It's because he was a con man, and he fooled the foolish. So do you know what's funny but sad? The most surprised person in 20 sec 2016 on election night was Trump himself. <laughs> and although disappointing, at least I reflected and I uh, looked at my campaign and I, I got nominated as chairman of the county commissions and we were able to adopt the CARES Act and the APA programs that I spoke about briefly uh, and how the city of Brockton benefited by that. So now it's time for a, uh, a, a little bit of a uh, public service announcement. It's time for a Hanley for Plymouth County Commissioner campaign commercial. <laughs> Hi, my name's Greg Hanley. I'm an old school Congressman Lynch, Red Sullivan, Labor Democrat. And I'm an Irish Catholic Democrat, born right out of the womb. My pronouns are we and us. Thank you. You can clap. I'm first on the ballot, but I'm number one in your heart. So please vote for Hanley on Tuesday, November 5th, so I continue on as your Plymouth County Commissioner. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. 
<laughs> no one's gonna leave because I'm buying the, the beers after it's over. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Get away, lady. <laughs> As my political journey continued in 2020, we were in the midst of the pandemic, and another election season was before us. And if you recall, our party needed to defeat Donald Trump. And our Massachusetts Democratic Party was divided on who to support as our nominee. Right away, however, and only after one term, I thought about Elizabeth Warren, my senator. I worked hard to defeat Scott Brown. However, selfishly and for the good of the county, I did not want to lose our senator to the presidency because I wanted her for us right here in the, doing the people's business in Massachusetts. That's when Claire Cronin approached me about Joe Biden. So with 30 years experience in the Senate and one term as the Vice President under uh, Obama, we felt that we would give, it, uh, that ticket would give us the best chance to win. So we took a gamble and it paid off. When in, ninth, in 2020 we gained the White House back and however, that followed a momentous campaign and of an insurrection that has shaken our country to its core today. Now I'll continue my democratic journey up to this very minute with you today by saying, here we are in 2024, the presidential cycle election has come before us again, and it's what people are calling an election of a lifetime. We need now to find ourselves in a fight, a fight for our lives, but not only for us Democrats, but for us as a nation. Originally, I was cautiously optimi optimistic of our presidential chances from March to May when I was collecting signatures. However, I experienced a hate and a distrust that I had never felt before. Uh, when we were going to collect signatures to get on the ballot, I became worried after experiencing it. And it, I felt that the country had changed and that I was had to change with it or we weren't gonna do it. But, to the credit of our leader, our president, who thought better of the country than himself. He put democracy ahead of his own ambition, and I now feel a rebirth and a renewed spirit of our democratic national identity that brings me back to 2008 when President Obama was elected. Yes. Yes. In closing, here is why I'm hopeful, and here's why I'm joyous, and I'm bolstered by the knowledge that the city of Brockton will rise to the challenge of electing Kamala Harris, the first female president in the United States. Because we are all Democrats. So more importantly, we have walked the walk and we've talked the talk over the years in the city of champions due to the great tradition of female leadership that has led the way since the creation of this Brockton City Committee with names like Gene Sullivan, yes. Alan Pesovich, Where's Darlene Gopi? Is she here today? Is Darlene here? Right, give me a wave. There she is. You know, in, in, you think about the history of the city with the electeds, okay? Public servants like Senator Anna Buckley, Representative Gen Geraldine Creedy, Representative and U.S. Ambassador to Ireland, Claire Cronin, Representative Michelle Dubois, Mayor Linda Belzotti, City Councilor Susan Del Castro, Representative Councilor Rita Mendez, Ann Beauregard, Ward 5 Council. You put your name on the ballot, That's right. and you won. How about those yeah. Ag Azar sisters, Shirley and Joyce, and the future of the Democratic Party? Where's my favorite candidate? Where is she? Right Stand up, you're right in the back. <laughs> it's a luxury, I love everyone. But it's my favorite right there, Bridget Cook. And I know, with her out by our side in the legislature, that this city, this county, and this country will be ready to fight to save our democracy and ex achieve extraordinary things. So thank you for the opportunity to let me speak about this journey which is now our journey, to do what's right, to fight for Democrats everywhere. Good, good luck, God bless you. Sorry, I think I did all right. I did sing it to Washington.